God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are most warmly welcome to this Sage Scriptures on the School. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Bow down your heads and let us pray. Father, we thank you for another Sage Scriptures on the School. We thank you because the entrance of your word giveth light. We praise your holy name for you have been our rock and our stand. We thank you for the manifestation of the glory of God. We thank you for the manifestation of the power of God. We thank you for the anointing which breaketh every yoke. We give you all the glory. We thank you for the blood shed on the cross of Calvary. Accept our thanks, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, lay your hands upon us today. Minister to our hearts by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For many weeks now, we have been looking at Babylon and the earth times. And so today we look at casualties of the kingdom of Babylon. By this we mean those that the kingdom of Babylon had converted to casualties in the spirit. They became casualties in the war waged by the spirit of Babylon. Life itself is a battle. In the battle of life there are winners and losers. And just like in physical battles, people are wounded, people are captured, people are killed. The same thing is true in our spiritual life. Just as injuries are sometimes inflicted in the physical realm, injuries are sometimes also inflicted in the spiritual realm. Physical warfare these days is getting complicated. There is satellite to see anywhere in the world. There is precision bombing that is seen in the dark. So right now the battle is hot. The kingdom of Babylon is looking for candidates. The kingdom of Babylon is fighting back. Listen very carefully. You will always tilt towards the area of your life that you feed. If you feed your flesh and you starve the soul and spirit, then you are not balanced. If you have your legs in two camps, it will make you a prey in the war that you are fighting. Where you tilt yourself towards, decide whether you will be a casualty or not. Broken relationships with the Lord will also make you a casualty in this war. When your affection dies down, when you are insensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, when you follow your own opinions instead of His instructions, and you become cut off from your true and reliable source, when you lose respect for the things of God, you already have a broken relationship with the Lord, and you make yourself a casualty in this war. So one is where you take towards, two is broken relationship with the Lord, three is communication breakdown. When your ears and eyes are deaf and blind to spiritual things, you do not hear the voice of God anymore. You are unable to communicate properly, you have poor reception of divine broadcast, then you position yourself to becoming a casualty. Four is spiritual ignorance. When you lack knowledge of activities in the heavens, you have no knowledge of daily operations in the spiritual realm. And worse still, you cannot defend yourself against attacks coming at you because you are spiritually blind, deaf, and lame. The ignorance will result in being easily entrapped by the snare of the enemy. Ignorance is a very terrible thing, and it should not be allowed at all. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Number five is lack of stamina. In Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Power in the spiritual life comes from closeness to God and engaging in spiritual exercises. The nearer you are to the seat of power, the more powerful you are. Those who already out of prayer meetings are planning to die. Moses had this testimony. He spent 40 days with the Lord. Daniel to spend days with the Lord. It's the testimony of all powerful men of God. They spend days with the Lord. Six is indiscipline. And the indiscipline the spirit makes you a casualty of this war. Seven is when you are easily provoked, you become a casualty in the war. Eight, talkativeness. Nine, inconsistency. Ten, impatience. Eleven, Stubbornness. 12. Pride. 13. Unforgiveness. 14. Laziness. 15. Compromising. 16. Gossiping. 17. Being revengeful. 18. Too sensitive. 
19, sexually loose, 20, covetous. All these are what will position you for becoming a casualty in this war in which we are fighting. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because you are addressing the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And in Revelation chapter 12, from verse 9 to 10, Revelation 12, 9 to 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the old world, who was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And in Acts chapter 19, from 13 to 16, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them, and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. They became casualty. The reality that we are in a war is crystal clear, as now satanic activities of the end time are widely overwhelming. There are rumblings of wars all over the world. There are seen and unseen wars going on every second, confronting everyone in the world. It is so sad that many believers are taking things for granted and they are becoming casualties cheaply. Many tongue-speaking Christians are wounded, injured, and a larger percentage die on the battlefield. The massive onslaught of our enemy, the devil, has recorded a huge number of casualties of unsuspected or unguided people of God. The truth is that we have more prisoners of war among the so-called soldiers of the Lord nowadays. There must be urgent spiritual revival and adequate training in order to rescue the church from this agenda of the wicked. Sad enough, many have been killed, destroyed, wounded, injured, amputated, yet fight goes on. Please note that all Christians are vulnerable, but we are not supposed to be the next victim. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand there take heed, lest he fall. You become a casualty. When you start engaging in spiritual war, unprepared. Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the old armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You become a casualty when you engage in spiritual warfare with known and unconfessed sins in your life. Psalm 66, verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 3. You become casualty when you are fighting with enemies' weapons in your life e.g. lying, stealing. Look at what happened in Joshua chapter 7 verse 20. And they can answer Joshua and say, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spies a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, and I coveted them, I took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. Was fighting with the enemy with the enemy's weapons in his life. Number four, when you are not really born again and yet you want to engage in spiritual warfare, that's what happens in Acts chapter 19, verse 15. And the Spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are ye? You become a casualty when you are using the wrong weapons in fighting particular battles. The second Corinthians 10 4 said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. You become a casualty of war when the enemy you are trying to fight is already in you. The enemy you are trying to fight is already in you. You become a casualty of war. 7. You become a casualty of war when you are fighting with weak, untested weapons. 8. You become a casualty of war when you are fighting with weak mind or defeated mind. 9. You become a casualty of war when fear has taken hold of your mind. And you say you are fighting. Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now you become a casualty of war when you are blind and deaf to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Like it says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Let them alone. 
they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. To become a casualty of war, when you are unable to tarry at the presence of God before taking actions. You are unable to tarry at the presence of God before taking action. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 23, 2 Samuel 5, 23, And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, I shall not go up, but first he come pass behind them, and come upon them against the more brave trees. You must tarry in the presence of God to obtain direction before you go. If you are a sinner in Zion, and you refuse to repent, you become a casualty of the kingdom of Babylon. If you are a backslider, you become a casualty. If you are ignorant, you become a casualty. If you are gullible-minded, you become a casualty. If you are a blind and deaf prayer warrior, you become a casualty. If you are adult babies that refuse to go, you become a casualty. If you are a carnal Christian, you become a casualty. If you are a lover of this world system and fashion mongers, you become a casualty. How do you prevent yourself from being casualty in this war in which we are in? What do you do to prevent yourself being a casualty in this strange war in which we find ourselves? Be properly and genuinely born again. Be adequately prepared for spiritual warfare. So the first point is be properly and genuinely born again if you don't want to be a casualty. Two, be adequately prepared for spiritual warfare by putting on the old armor of God as written in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18. Stand therefore, having your loins get with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 3. Do regular spiritual self-examination. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, and that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. 4. Never engage in warfare unprotected. 5. You must be guided and directed by the Holy Spirit all the days of your life. 6. Your life must be in harmony with the Word of God. 7. Do your spiritual warfare with appropriate warfare scriptures. Must be a person with the Word of God. You must be a person with the Word of God. 8. Get rid of all disobedience out of your life. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now, when your mind is condemning you on a particular misdeed or fault, you must settle it with the Holy Spirit. Settle it with the Holy Spirit. 10. Do not fight the wrong cause. 11. Do not engage in spiritual battle for the show of ego, not establishing the righteousness of God. 12. Do not build again what you have already destroyed. What God has destroyed in your life, you are building it again and yet you want to engage in spiritual battle. Don't build again what God has destroyed. The Bible says in Galatians 2.18, If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. 13. Do not fight with bad motives. 14. Disallow your spiritual stamina or strength from being weak. The Bible says if thou faith in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Proverbs 24.10 15. Fighting while living in darkness as the enemy will cause you to be a casualty. 16. Fighting when your spiritual antenna is damaged or weak, that it cannot receive spiritual signal, will cause you to be a casualty. 17. Never indulge in any known sin because it will make you a casualty. In Numbers 32 23. But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. 18. Let your life be transparent before God. 19. Never compromise your stand as a Christian. Live a holy and pure life. Don't compromise your life as a Christian. Live a holy and pure life. In 1 Peter 1.15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. 20. You must be addicted to prayer and fasting regularly. Matthew 17.21 says, Albeit this can go out, not out, but by prayer and fasting. 21. Get rid of bitterness and unforgiveness if you do not want to be a casualty in the school of spiritual warfare. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Looking diligently, 
Lest any man fall of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And 22. Lay everything about your life on the altar of sacrifice. Live sacrificially. Be emptied of self and be full of Christ. In Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the merits of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The stand of the Bible is very clear that we are in a war, and there must be adequate preparation. Anything short of the adequate preparation may lead to colossal lust. We need to wake up from every spiritual sleep and pick our necessary weapon of war to fight this battle against the kingdom of Babylon. I am praying that you will not be the next victim in this spiritual war in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Bow down your heads and let us pray now. Father, we thank you for another session before you. Father, I pray that you keep your children standing. Let them be surrounded by the edge of fire. Let them be surrounded by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let them experience the touch and power of Jehovah in a new way. Lay your hands of fire and power upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining the Sage Scriptures on this school. Please continue to join the rest of the service. God bless you in Jesus' name.